Hey, good morning. It's December 21st. It's the beginning of winter. Shortest day of the year. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the beginning of summer and the longest day of the year. Where I am, we have just under 10 hours of daylight as opposed to around 14 hours of darkness. In six months from now, that'll be reversed. Same thing for, is true for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere. What's remarkable about this, and the reason I bring it up today, is because these seasons happen. Our scientists, our climate scientists, have been able to observe and predict these seasons happen with amazing regularity. The timing, year after year, decade after decade, century after century, is exact not because of some physical, dynamic, non-caring force, but because of the power of God, and specifically because of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of the wind and the waves. Now let me connect this to Advent, to Christmas. This little baby that we see in the manger that people are not threatened by, don't have any really issues with that because the baby doesn't do much, right? Not this baby. This baby continues and continue then to be Lord of the universe. John Murray, a consummate theologian, New Testament scholar, said that in looking at Philippians 2, he described this business of Jesus becoming man, becoming incarnate, the advent of Christ, as addition by subtraction. So he was still all that he was. He never gave up being God. He was fully man, fully God. That's what he did when he was in the baby. He was fully man and fully God. So he's still controlling the world around us. He's still controlling the climate. Jesus, whether he's in the manger or reigning now as he does in heaven, is in control of the climate. We can take hope in that. We can take peace in that. Job 37, like many other passages of scripture, says this. The breath of the Lord of God produces ice. The broad waters become frozen. He loads the clouds with moisture. He scatters lightning through them. At his direction, they swirl around. The clouds swirl around and the, over the face of the entire earth to do whatever he commands them to do. That is control. That is power over the climate. He brings clouds to punish men or water or to water his earth and to show his love. He does both. Now, hang on for a second. Where is this taking us? We can't ascribe to man the power of God, and specifically this power of the Lord Jesus Christ, the baby in a manger now reigning, has ascribed to himself. He is the Lord of the wind and the waves. He is the Lord of the weather. We are not. But we do have an impact on climate only not how our experts are telling us about it. In 1 Kings, it hadn't rained for three years. Elijah spoke in a prophecy given to him by God that it would not rain until Elijah said it was okay when he heard from God. So he confronts Ahab after this three-year period of drought and immense suffering. And Ahab looks at Elijah and says, you're this troubler of Israel. And Elijah says, I'm not the trouble of Israel. I'm not the one that's causing this. But you and your people have turned away from God. And God is responding with this drought. And then we know later on in the story that Elijah has this contest with the prophets of Baal, the false prophets. He wins in a mighty way and the Lord sends the rain again. 
most important factor in climate control when there's difficult climate is the word repent. As I talked about last week, millions and millions of babies are slaughtered each year under the banner of personal freedom. We live our life as if God doesn't exist. The Bible says that the fool is a person who lives like God doesn't exist, who pretends God doesn't exist. But God does exist. And this little baby that we're so happy to celebrate right now, by his power then and his power now, is still Lord of the universe, Lord of the climate, Lord of the human heart. We can't sin, we can't slaughter babies, we can't live life the way we want, we can't, we can't be controlled by greed and pretend that there's no impact. There is impact. And one of the ways of impact is climate. If you want to produce climate change, we need to start talking about repentance. First in our own hearts, but then praying that our nation will begin to repent. It doesn't take millions and millions of people. It takes people crying out to God. And for us seizing this opportunity to say, look, this is not about people making a mess in the science sense. This is about people saying, God, you don't matter. And God responds to that in various ways in the climate, just as Job 37 says he does. Jesus is the Lord of the wind and the waves. The baby in the manger is and was the Lord of the climate. May we seek God in brokenness, first for our own selfishness and our own desires, but then on the broader scale, would God open hearts and bring repentance to our land? Heal us from this plague that's happening. Restore the climate to the way that is consistent with honoring you and help us to honor you in that way. And that's the thought. Not a typical Christmas thought, but if we're going to talk about baby Jesus, if we're going to talk about the Lordship of Christ, and we're going to talk about what it means to celebrate the Advent, we need to talk about this too. Great to be with you today. Thanks so much for being here. Check us out every day, talk247.com. Tons of resources there for you. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, turn on post notifications, the videos will come right to you. Thank you so much for your support, your feedback, and such a blessing to me. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you this evening. You have a great day, worshiping the Lord of the climate. See you soon, bye-bye.